Good morning to you. Mark Sot of HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Thursday, the 15th of June, 2023. And on today's discussion, the possibility now of very rare June development out in the deep tropics, the main development region. You know, I said yesterday that very warm water that we have relative to average, you know, will it ever amount to anything? That's the part that we don't know. Well, today it looks like it very well might. So let's get on with it. I'll show you what we've got, starting with the National Hurricane Center. Remember, they are now issuing a seven-day tropical weather outlook. And so let's just click on that and take a look. Here it is, and if we look at the text product, a tropical wave is forecast to move off the west coast of Africa later today and early Friday. Environmental conditions are expected to be, to be conducive. That's incredible to read in June out in this part of the Atlantic. Be conducive of gradual development of this system while it moves generally westward at 15 to 20. That's another big clue right there. It's not hauling westward across the open central Atlantic there. Um, well, once it gets there, so the trades are just not that strong. So there it is, is the area that we will be watching. And this is all that area that has well above normal water temperatures right now. September temperatures in June. This is what it looks like on the visible or true color satellite animation. Courtesy of Tropical Tidbits, there's the tropical wave there. It's going to be moving into this environment, interacting with the intertropical convergent zone. So it'll get a little bit of a boost from that. And then we will see what happens. I'll show you the modeling here towards the end. But it looks like conditions could be pretty favorable for this to try to develop. And if it does, and it happens to get a name, I know that's jumping ahead a little bit, it would be Brett. Uh, we have had development out this way early in the season before we had Elsa back in 2021. And it made it all the way across and eventually made landfall, of course, in Florida. Uh, 1996, it was way later than we are right now, but not, you know, not like months later. Um, it was near July 4th or so, I think it was, that we had Bertha that came off the coast of Africa in the days uh, prior, and it developed and eventually hit the United States. And then we had another Bertha early on in 2008. So it's those bee storms. Of course, 2021, we were well ahead of things. You know, that was just a different year. But it's very rare. It's not unprecedented. What I'm going to be looking for is to see how intense this gets while it is out across this area right through here in the open tropical Atlantic. If this thing ramps up to a formidable tropical storm, and again, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but just kind of speculating out into the future based on what I'm looking at, and I'll show you in a minute, that could be very, very telling. If it comes out, dries out, gets sheared, and then just dies away, well, that's typically par for the course, and that's what we would expect to happen this time of year. So if that doesn't happen, and it stays strong, so to speak, relative to June standards, that could mean something. All right, there's not much on the impulse with it right now, but this is the energy coming off of Africa at the 850 millibar level. This is the vorticity, but this is that energy, the tropical wave that'll come off and it'll move out into the tropical Atlantic here, and we can track that using this product from the University of Wisconsin over the next several days. That'll be fascinating to do. And of course, here you go. And again, are you kidding me? This is that very warm water, two to three degrees Celsius now, above the long-term average. And this is the area all through here that this tropical system is going to have to work with, moving across very favorable conditions, considering the time of year we are in. All right, so interestingly enough, the wind shear, this is a really neat product. Uh, the wind shear is actually, let's use a color that will pop better against this, right where it should be. So wind shear in the tropical Atlantic, pretty much average according to this particular chart and product. But the vertical <clears throat> instability is rather um, below the climatological average right now. That's what this is showing. So the air is still pretty dry out there. That's what that means. Instability is, think of it as the ability of the atmosphere to create thunderstorms. There's just not much instability there. It's a stable atmosphere. Why is it fairly stable? And we'll have to see if this can overcome that. And if the modeling is incorrect, we shall see. So this is one of those products that we can look at the instability with to an extent. 
Um, this is the precipitable water. Now our tropical wave is right here, and that's got a lot of precipitable water in the atmosphere to ring out. But all of these colors in here, now that's drier air, so there's less instability. The air is more stable. However, the farther south you go, you get into the intertropical convergent zone, and yes, that's where you have a pretty good uh, level of precipitable water, PWAT, we call it PWAT, in the atmosphere. And we can see that also represented on the SAL, Saharan Air Layer product. And let's use, I want this to pop, I guess the color white. This is all of your fairly favorable area through here. To the north of that, that is dry air. Dry air in the mid-levels or stable air. Not much dust at all. A lot of people like to say that, oh, the Saharan air layer, look at that, it's all dusty out there. Mm, no, it's not. It's just dry mid-level air. But again, to the south of it, this is a favorable corridor. So we'll have to see, does this tropical wave come off and take advantage of the favorable conditions farther to the south and try to develop? And the answer is, at least according to the modeling, we'll start with the GFS. And let me just explain this a little bit real quick especially for those of you who are new to my channel. Um, I like to look at the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere, that's about 5,000 feet up, and the vorticity signature, sort of the skeleton. It's at the low part of the atmosphere. It's not right at the ocean surface, but only 5,000 feet up. And if it's got a good 5,000 foot or 850 millibar frame, if you will, to work with, then we can see that on the vorticity side here of this model, uh, from tropicaltidbits.com, the model output generated by that website. Of course, it's created through NOAA and the um, supercomputers and all that. I'm getting too much into the weeds of it. But I like this level of the atmosphere because if it's there at the bottom, so to speak, and it has a good framework, well, then we see how it works up from there. That's just how I like to look at it. Doesn't mean that I'm right. It's just my it's how I roll, as they say. So let's roll with it and see what's happening. This is, uh, uh, let's get out to 24 hours. So this is the 6Z runs. This is 2 a.m. last night. Um, and these are updated, of course, every six hours. But here it is right here. That's the energy that we, well, we got to outline it where we can see it, Mark. Right there. That's it. That's what we want to watch. So watch that as it goes across over the coming days. There's 48 hours still there. And then by 72, it's on its way. Now, look, it is very small right there in its aerial coverage. Terrible arrow. <laughs> you get the idea, though. We'll, we'll, we'll highlight it in yellow. That didn't even work. But it's small um, because it doesn't have a big environment of favorability to work with. So it's got to kind of lay low, as they say. But look at this. It tracks across. Uh, there's day five. And I am going to show you out to day seven from here on out. Normally, I'm a day five guy because that's where the forecast would stop from the Hurricane Center. We rarely look beyond five days, but since their outlook goes out to seven days, why not? So there's day five, and then finally day six, still there, and day seven, still there at the low levels of the atmosphere. Decent little framework with it um, to the southwest of this ridge over here, a little bit of troughing, but this isn't very big, so it shouldn't just turn out to sea immediately. It doesn't mean that it can't, but it's going to be something that we're going to want to watch, especially for our friends in the islands. And if we look at the Euro, the ECMWF, this also tries to develop, develop it. Again, keep your eyes on this corridor right here. That's square in the main development region. The Euro grabs onto it um, a little later. It takes it longer to develop. This is about 120 hours or so five days out. But later on after that, yes, it goes right into the islands at about a week's time it approaches, okay? So we're going to want to watch this. The GFS is quicker to develop the Euro a little bit later, but the Euro also has this sprawling subtropical ridge sitting out here. And for steering, that would keep it going right on across. So yes, we are going to want to monitor this for a number of reasons, obviously, Let's see if there could be any impacts to our friends in the islands. Way too soon to know, but hey, it's time to pay attention. Two, does this take advantage of these very early season favorable conditions that are out there, especially that very warm water? And then when it all comes together, if it does, let's see 
how well organized it is, how strong it gets, because that, I think, will be a very telling message for the future. A warning shot, if you will, across the bow, as they say. All right? So not going to make too much of it just yet, but it is certainly something we'll be paying attention to in the coming days. All right? I'll stay on top of that for you daily, of course. All right, if you're new to the channel or if you've been here a while and you haven't subscribed yet, don't know what you're waiting for, it doesn't cost you anything, hit the subscribe button. Please like whatever the algorithms are. Um, I, I look, we had a few thousand people watch yesterday's video. I appreciate it. I really do. It's nice to be able to talk to you and not at you and try to educate you about what I look at in my daily work. All right, so that is it. Possibility of very rare early June development. We shall see. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. I do appreciate it. I'm Mark Suddeth. We are Hurricane Track. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.